Seven. I said if Endpoint choked this out, if it goes to OT, I see Sprout taking it just because they are a confident heavy side. That Sprout are a side that when they get that snowball effect underway, when they get the ball rolling, momentum's on their side, in their sails, they are unstoppable. And I knew that Endpoint just didn't mentally have it within them to overcome. So it worried me. I forewarned it. I foreshadowed it at 15-11. And it came to fruition. And it's not even me claiming my ability as a as a fortune teller. It's more the case of that we've seen this time and time again for Endpoint. This isn't, you know, it, it's not a flash in the pan. It's a bit of a, a common thing, yeah. unfortunately. And uh, sadly, now they go in towards map number two. But we are on the way, ladies and gentlemen. Overpass is our second map. It's Sprout's pick. As they start on the T side, can they find their first pistol? Let's find out. Utility is being deployed right now. Flash coming in and stare. Look how deep he is to all the beasts are already. Harry God's got no chance of water. And Max, even though he wasn't checked for a second, gets found by stare. And look at the headshots coming through from Sprout. It's an absolute destruction to kick off overpass. Three for Xiphon, two for stare. And you do wonder, Nay, I was going to talk, it, talk about it just before we started the pistol round, but uh, I'm wondering. Heavy guard, whether he'll have a few nightmares about staring at MHL, his teammate, diffusing in the smoke, thinking he has the defuse, when he's mm -hmm. the one with the defuse kit, and he said no, and it was the wrong call. Yeah, things like that really do, you know, come back to haunt you. It makes it you know, tough to sleep at night at times, especially with so much on the line. I mean, these guys are all fighting for one remaining spot left in Pro League. Pro League, I mean, it's the pinnacle of Counter-Strike. It's where yeah. everybody wants to be. Endpoint with their last season. Sprout didn't quite make it. They lost their FTW. It was a historic upset. And this is already looking pretty bad for them. MHL find the first nurse for a double with the MP7. Wow. Thankfully, refresh will trade. The numbers remain level. But my God, what a messy fight in towards Connector. Yeah, a double, which wasn't necessarily as intended. MP7. It's not a gun you usually see in a round such as this, but he feels confident with it. And why not? It is a good SMG in the right hands. Not necessarily in our hands, but in their hands for sure. <laughs> Three Eagles to remain to hold off. And there's not really a spot there low enough to be one banged by one. And there you go. One bullet hit. And he puts Zillow down to 68 points of health as he hits the instant headshot with the Galil. That opens out the A-bomb site. Bomb can go down. Heavy God and Mighty Max probably considering maybe even keeping their Kevlar into the next round here. One kill would be nice, but maybe thinking that if they can at least remove one more Sprout player, it would put a lot more pressure on the economy. As of course, rebuying with two players alive is a lot harder. Three, and they do attempt it. Heavy God does hit his headshot, so I think the goal they wanted to achieve there has been found. But of course, they only do get that one. Sprout take the round comfortably. 2-0. Good start. Comfortable start. I mean, for Sprout, this is just continuing now from exactly what we saw over towards uh, the, the vertical T side, right? Very, very simple stuff from Sprout taking fights, winning them out. I mean, a little bit messy in towards Connector, but overall, this has been uh, some relatively plain sailing for the last, what, 11 rounds now for Sprout, where they've been yep. untouched between the two maps. Endpoint really desperately need to find some form and some confidence these guys look mentally defeated already and unfortunately their economy a little bit defeated in towards round number three they've only got pistols to wield and work with one nade by refresh in towards khan he's gonna find some damage and the molotov will do exactly what's necessary denying that rotation maybe even forcing an engagement in towards siphon certainly possible you walk into the stack and connect to it's always very dangerous but if nades come through like that then it certainly makes it a lot less threatening Goodness me, Nerds and MHL with 8 and 11 HP respectively. Nice P250 cheeky kill from Surreal, catching stare off guard. But the main threat is still in connector, so it shouldn't be an issue here. MHL can at least try and play around with the headshot angle on such low HP. Nade somehow doesn't touch any of them. Apart from a bit of a chip to Heavy God. There are two players on the A side now, but I had no idea that Refresh has crept all the way through with the SMG. Uh, last time I cast Sprout on this map, Refresh hit what was an absolutely ridiculous 1v3 clutch to win the game against Spirit in ECL. Ah, okay. That was a, that was a, a, a clip with Paladin, our good friend. Hello, talent. 
enjoyed that Talent. one. Two and a half talent, boy. <laughs> one of us. One of us. One of us. One of us. I wish Endpoint were one of us right now because it's not looking good over there. No. 3 0. I mean, of course, this was just pistols, so you can't really, you know, expect too much. Maybe the fuse would be hilarious, but uh, refresh, uh, thankfully, checks it away. I don't get it to an AK, it's an upgrade too. So, all in yep. all, everything looking fantastic over towards Sprout right now. And, uh, you know, there's, there's very little for them over the last kind of 11, 12 rounds that they can really complain at all about. It's been some stellar Counter Strike being played, very, very few rookie errors being made. And when they do make an error, thankfully, they've got kind of two, three other players around them to really step up to the plate and, and kind of bail them out. So this is the thing for Endpoint where at times you, you look and you sort of rely on the fact of your, your nerds or your, your MHLs to really step up. And maybe if those two have a bit of a stink or a bit of a mistake, you maybe don't have that firepower and consistency to really bail them out of bad situations. They have a sprout of so many. And speak of the devil, he shall arise. Nerds will find the first. There to fall. Good flash toward Monster there. Mighty Max was so blind and now next hit the entry, but thankfully, thankfully for Endpoint's sake, Surreal was still there. Can they finally break the streak here, Endpoint? They have a 4v3 and reminder, last map was a 15-10 lead to a 19-15 defeat. So they still yet to win a round since they're at 15-10. Need to find one now. A good start on this CT side of Pass. Of course, very important on this map. Steps heard by Nertz. It might be, he might now realize that if he heard that one step, that probably there will be a fallback toward B. So he could have a quick flank here. There are two players here anyway. Zyphon will get that nostril flash in action. The classic monster flash as Refresh tries to clear out monster. Back turned, being primed for more utility, but Refresh probably needs both of these kill here. He comes a flashbang, but he can't convert either. Well, they know there are two players up close as well. The more peaks continue to come in, and Heavy God gets it all done. Zello has the AWP, but he has to fall away with it. And there's the streak over, Neo. Finally. Finally, my gosh, Rempoint. That took a long while for them to finally find a round on the board. It's just a question of now, can they use this small bit of success? The first thing was it 12 rounds now that we've seen uh, yep. in a row for Sprout. Yeah, so the first in 12 that we've seen for Endpoint to find success, or this being the 13th round of it. So you're thinking now, can they use this as a, as a catalyst to success? Can they use this to spiral in their own way? Oh, oh, <laughs> there's, okay. There's a ghost in the, in the, in the, uh, in the closet there, in the cabinet. <laughs> Make sure not to, uh, not to head that way. Past That's spooky. Present we, and we're, we're, future. We're past spooky season. But exactly. Now we're in I don't know, snowy season. It's pretty Probably. cold. It is actually pretty, pretty cold. cold, and it was genuinely like icy and really frosty here in the morning, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. Don't slip Same over. Here. Don't hurt yourself. Don't. Yeah, Endpoint already slipped from a pretty bad lead, so I don't want to do it again. <laughs> Three to oh. one. Finally got some success. Can they use the snowball effect that led to Sprout taking map number one and starting off well here? Can they use it of their own accord to find some form? Once again, a lot of that monster presence coming through here. We see... Uh, a lot of util being set up. I don't really think, think we'll see too much of a take coming through here. They may be, or might send the likes of a Law and X or a Xyphon just to kind of poke their head around and see if they find an opening kill. But now, though, Sprout, happy just to pump the brakes a bit. Well, uh, you say that, but they are happy to Hang go on. toward Monster. And as you say, I mean, they have a good opportunity to entry here because their defensive setup for Endpoint could be exposed. On first of ABC, beautiful long range spray from Law and X. And I know Max is now stuck in water. Easy trade. 4v3, Endpoint playing an incredibly defensive setup on B. He's going to get exposed. And now MHL needs to the back. He goes for the right <laughs> angle, but Laonex is just hitting every single headshot right now. And he can have these streaks, can't he? He's going to force Endpoint away again. Lauren X is just an absolute animal. I mean, when he's really feeling it, I, I, I think there's very few tier two riflers who can compete. I, I think he's up there with some of the best of the best. It's just a case of when he's feeling it. Map number one was actually a little bit quiet from him, to be perfectly honest. We don't really see the kind of superstar potential that we know he has in the locker too much. He was, you know, as we were saying, a little bit more from Stair, but my God, what a start there. Those three kills are fantastic. 7-1 as well in terms of the KD for him. Brazil, fans is okay. No flashbacks, we're all good. But uh, it will be Sprout regaining some success. Three round lead built up. Four to one. All in all, so much positives for, for, for them to take away. For Endpoint, again, they have to go for a save call there. For Nerds and Heavy God, it's a priority keeping those two rifles in play just to have something to work with in a more longer term scope. 
But uh, where we are right now, yes, they can fall by in, but they're never really going to feel comfortable. They lose this round. They're, you know, broken once again. Their economy's in tatters, and they're forced into this kind of this brutal cycle. It's fall by in. Failure to find that success means that they're back to square one, and a bit of a, a rinse and repeat one after the other. So, thankfully, we see a bit of attack pause score. They need a conversation here yeah. because it's not working, right? This is not going the way it would have hoped. And I mean, how do they change their, their, their fate right now? That's a good question. CT side overpass as well. Map, which as we say, they're very 50-50 on. Not necessarily got their wins against the quality of opponent like Sprout. Mm. We shall see how it will pan out. Now next, doing exactly what we know he can do in the early stages of the T side. Three kills on the entry from Monster. Moving everyone from the B side. Boy, to put out the control molly toward the T steps. Probably the most default grenade on this map, to be fair. And Mertz has got a very advanced angle past the picnic area. Almost exposed to Fountain, but just not that far ahead just yet. He will now push forward, and he's already had some success on this angle before. And he got this there last time too, but now bullets are an issue, and they're really charging him down here. I uh, just saw both players coming in from playground, ready to trade that, even if Stair did go down. But Stair just pre-fires him out of the round anyway. No, it's trying to use his star power to recover these situations, but not going to happen. Siphon doesn't check short properly as the door is blown open. I'm not sure if he was aware of that. I'm sure he was, but it'd be a surprise for him that he died in the back. I'm certain of it. Max has found the star of the previous round, so 4v3 for endpoint. And yeah, numbers looking good, right? It's just about where they can use that in their favor. So far, a bit of time to work with as well. 40 seconds on the clock. Sprout, trying to find any sort of hope here. I mean, what do they do? The 2-2 split for endpoints. They know wherever they execute, they'll have the numbers advantage. It's just a case of can they set themselves up in a strong enough post bar. As Utah reigns through, this might beckon over a rotation. When does one of Mike's or uh, Surreal come and join oh. them? No one's coming just yet. The Molotov's ticking, but thankfully, Epic got five to first. Looking to make it two, but Zello, other ideas. Bomb is dropped in no man's land and a barrel spotted. Should be MHL for a freebie. Can he make it two? The answer's no, but stare time is still ticking, my friend. And the bomb shouldn't be able to go down because behind him is Max. We'll see it off. Yeah, well done. Good job from Endpoint there. That was all. a little bit scary for a second as that Molotov actually hit both players on the site, especially ticking Heavy God, who was behind Dice. He managed to get away from it. And even though a couple of entries were hit and Zello tried his best to fake out MHL, you're not going to make him pull the trigger too early in that scenario. Waited for the final moment. Got the kill. Secured the round comfortably. So, still half the score, but it's early days. Refresh. Matt 10 in this round. Not going to be best in the world, but... Utility to go along with it, so it should be alright. You know, MHL with the open play, spot stare, and stare is very fortunate, I would say. Get away with his life there. Well, now once again, it's controlling the favour of Sprout, but it's a much slower take here. All this T side, they're not really kind of prioritizing map control. They're, they're more than happy just to play off the back of trades, right? Play for those for gunfights. I think that actually plays into Sprout's playstyle, you know? They're more than happy to. Gonna give up, maybe even slightly reluctantly, a bit of that control, but just to play off the back of the individuals to step up. And speaking of, refresh doesn't get spotted in transition. May have potentially been heard by Nerds, but for now, there's nothing too much to worry about. MHL in towards long bathrooms, but they're going up for, for a banana take. This is an interesting setup for Endpoint. They might not expect someone to be so deep behind long bathrooms, and they don't, certainly won't expect it to be MHL. Great shot to find Laonex, and they can't trade it. Zyphon tries to deal with him. Not possible. Heavy guard. Oh, he hits the instant dink up close. But the AK trumps M4 as always. Yellow takes that one. Doesn't even need the AWP for his opening kill. And look at the line being held by Stanley. They know exactly where he is, though. MHL's got him locked into the corner. It's confirmed information for Endpoint and perhaps for Nerts to deal with. But Siphon spotted him too. Gun barrel seen. Free fire. Perfect. He knows exactly where to put his crosshair. Now they have the 4v3. Zello, of course, as I mentioned, was very low. And MHL will find him. And now Max is coming up from this position too. Xiphon might get timing here if he's not careful. 
The time is ticking down very low, and now they have to run, which will reveal, reveal the position. Max somehow manages to take stair before Zyphon takes that kill. But now time is impossible. So really, time left out to dry here. He might be able to save in bank in the corner. He won't go down to the bottom here. I think they're just going to be okay to save it, but another tough situation resolved by Sprout. Small, fine margins, but I'll take them at this point. You know, he's getting up once again already slightly concerning in a case of, well, friend point, CT side not looking too good. And generally this map in my eyes always seems to lean more favorably over towards our CT side. I think the T side can be very difficult to get under your belt and to, to kind of get, get going in a more confident manner, right? So I think for end point, the fact that we're seeing them really struggle to be consistent, consecutive rounds on the board over towards their CT is quite worrying. It yeah. does make me question, what is their T-side going to be like? Especially if we can sit the back over towards Vertigo, where we did see some, you know, some rookie errors creep through and the success come off the back quite heavily of the individuals, like your MHLs, your nerves, and Heavy got at times stepping up. So I do get a little bit worried. Five to two, three round lead. Sprout already have a map under their belts. Are looking absolutely fine right now. They're loving life in the server. Very little to complain about. Friend points. You can see why they're getting a little bit nervous. Pause is being called and they're trying desperately to break the tempo. Yeah. And the only thing they really have as a significant threat in this round is that saved AWP and M4. And they support it. Oh, Laronex. I think he's going to be delighted the fact that he gets one there before the boost takes him down. Thankfully, Max didn't have a gun to lose, so it's not a big loss. But we God can go in and recover that. So, is the AK back in CT hands once again? So, he has a Mac turn this round. He knows that the buy is low. You need to waste too much money in going for any more than that. But Sprout, despite the fact that they know the M4 is on this side of the map, we are going in as a group here. Two towards short, or at least one towards short for now. Zello's going to be close up. Not going to be flashed in just yet. It's going to be a chance, and there we go. It's a hard angle to find. Always tends to favour a CT, and Heavy God finds it. So now stare, smoke towards CT. He's going to play through it, and that's a really good idea. He's going for the Orb and the M4, but he might be dealing with both here, Stair. This is a genius play. He's doing so much good work. Good trades at least. <laughs> Stair. And only get that couple of kills, and now Zyphon 1 versus 2, not in a situation that I think he would be expecting to be in, and he's been tagged by the AWP from heaven. How that wasn't a kill, I'm not sure, but he has to be looking for Heavy God first, and Heavy God finds it. Could that be the low buy round that injects some fire into Endpoint? Yeah, could that be the turning point, right? I mean, they needed a miracle. They needed someone to step up, and Heavy God, great round for him, two kills to his name, MHL, bit of a cork with the AWP as well. So all in all, Better, comfortable, confidence starting to grow ever so slowly over towards Endpoint, but there's still life between the eyes. There's still this fight left in the uh, UK organization. I mean, you're still um, for, for Sprout. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on how Sprout played that situation by pushing two into CT? I think that was a bit yeah. too overzealous. I, I do, but I can understand it as well because you've got two minds about how you play in, in a post one there, right? They went for the aggressive manner, which is trying to, you know, uh, get uh, information, first of all. And they're expecting yeah. it, basically, to go and get information and basically be able to play a trade. And if they play a trade, they're still fine in a post-plant because they, they still have at least one left alive, right? But unfortunately for them, it, it just doesn't pan out the way you would have hoped. The other way of playing it is, you know, park up on site or, you know, you see people plot over towards B, maybe sitting towards Monster or sitting towards Short Water and play, you yeah. know, extremely passive. But it's quite readable, right? Especially off the back of a bomb plant. So they're trying to do something a little bit different. But honestly, I, I think that is just Sprout, right? They're, they're so reliant on the individuals being able to, you know, hit insane shots and mechanically be better than the rest. And I think maybe they relied a little bit too heavily on them there. Maybe should have just pumped the brakes a bit. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we're all experts after the event. But either yeah. way, we will never know. MHL. Missed that first shot, and that might give Sprout a chance to get towards the site here. Mike Sheldon has got the player close up to the right side of the bathroom, and he will get pushed down by Refresh's P250. That's a free AWP now for Zyphon. This is a pretty much a full force buy for Sprout in this round. Nurse has got some control toward Long, and he will swing and destroy Lauren X. But the bomb is planted open, and because they have that AWP in play, they're very confident in playing these super long ranges, and Refresh P250 gets another. Still a 2v3 though, and there is a smoke for the bomb. Refresh will get himself that gun too, and Zyphon finds the headshot toward Heavy God, but the bomb is being Sticking. held right now, and they're going to be fine. 
Fish will decide to swing, but he doesn't get any more kills. Zyphon got one in the meantime, which means it's very expensive, but endpoint escape just. Fine margins. Very, very fine margins. The Bomb Blonde does give the money to work with for Sprout as well, so they're actually not too worried. It's actually more of a towards endpoint where you see them, even when they find success, the fact that it is so expensive is going to mean that in a little bit more of a longer-term sense, they're always going to have this... Uh, I'm just thinking in the back of their mind, right, where they think, you know, do do I go for this push or, you know, do I have to maybe even consider the fact that I might not have a, as full of a buy-in towards the next. So I maybe hold my utility longer than I would have wanted to because I may not have the ability to uh, to, to, to buy into some more or whatever. So all in all, I think for Endpoint, you can kind of see why they are burning at quite a few of these tack pauses in, in what is quite the early stage of this, uh, yeah. this second map, right? Because there's so many questions that they need to clear up and... So many kind of uncertainties they need to get over if they want to be able to push this towards our third and final decider of Inferno. As they say, all good best to use of Inferno. I think that's nonsense because nukes are the best. <laughs> but, you know, it, it would make for a very spicy affair because both of these two sides do love Inferno. And that is actually a really fair even proving ground. So it would be spicy, but at the moment, Sprout not giving them the opportunity to. Still got a lead. Zella taking a lot of early space. Yeah, this is what Zeno loves to do. This is what all Warpers do, to be fair, on overpass. And it's a great chance to get an opening fine, but he's going to have to scarp up from that grenade and will escape. And X again goes for an entry through the monster smoke too before he falls away. But to feel like Endpoint went away with one there, not losing at least one player. Of course, Sprout wanting to go super aggressive. They've had a full array of weapons, and Nurts once again is proving to be a nuisance around the A bomb site. Around the A site in general, I should say. The, uh, pushing through Fountain and Playground, always tough to deal with. That is good, but it doesn't push Lionex off the angle as much as they would have hoped. He still goes one for one. But Surreal does find the immediate trade, so it shouldn't be an issue. Sprout playing sort of baits at the moment. And Refresh is creeping in toward B as it stands. Can he get himself a cheeky kill here? Always oh, been spotted by Surreal. That's the information that Refresh didn't want them to have because he could have maybe crept in further. Got an extra kill. Now she comes through. He comes in. Trying to find a player in the smoke, but there are two in there. That's going to be a nightmare for him to deal with. Can't get away with that. Zello doesn't look the right way. Surreal gets himself a lovely 3k hold and an AK upgrade too. And endpoint are now equal. That's a great and really, really kind of necessary round from Endpoint as well. He has a, a lot of stipulations behind it. Not only are they starting to find confidence, are they starting to kind of, you know, roll with the punches as well. And the matter is the A side, the B side, the final success. But it's kind of more that comes towards it. Endpoint building up some stability in terms of that CT economy, which is much easier than done. And breaking Sprout simultaneously always leads to just a little bit of breathing room for them to work with now. And you probably see a little bit more of an aggro push in towards this round. Hence why Nerds have a little peek in. They know that the bar over towards that t side is going to be on the on the lower side that's going to mean that they maybe might be tempted to uh try and play a little bit more uh more aggro to find some information just to in case right the pistols flying towards the site we all, yeah those uh those kind of number advantage rushes despite the lesser firepower pistols can make them quite scary no tech nines though you know so for me uh I, I'd be, if I'm refresh, I'm, I'm calling for a Tech-9 picked up here. They, they themselves running and gunning can't find some damage. MHL will spot one jump of peeking. Will he get the peek? No, he falls away. And of course, he's, now he's given up that angle. He doesn't want to get timing, so he's going to have to fall yeah. away. That's a smart play in general, knowing that it's a low buy round. Not uh, putting yourself in any undue risk. But... Yeah, I think... Uh, I agree with the Tech-9 call, but if they were going for a rush, then definitely. But I think they're just sort of... It's very obvious they're set up in this round for just one bullet picks, right? With these deagles at long ranges, so I do get it. We're going to go for mm -hmm. a boost as well to try and get stair something. They see the jump spot of the MHL. Whether he's seen them or not, I do not know. They now know at least where MHL is residing. What does he get on this defense? 30 seconds to go. It looks like it will be A. There's no real chance to fall back. There is a bit of a lurk toward long, which could prove to be a little bit of a problem. Zello gets a weird timing with that Glock. But there are two players here, so it shouldn't be an issue. 15 seconds now. They can't really afford to go down half the time. Or afford to save. They need the money in the loss bonus. So they're going to try and kill them all up here. There it is. Nurk gets himself four. Lovely eco frags for him. A bit more confidence to work with. Not that he needed it. And the uh, end point will hit the front. A lead. Taken. 
and a time to breathe as well before was gonna be quite an electric round of a 12 full by coming out for sprout we're gonna see what they're able to do in terms of a response they started so well in towards overpass as well i mean they're already super super confident and and starting to really really punish and, and push endpoint to the brink now it starts to be a little bit more of an even contest this is where we really get to see how things pan out and well that's weather sprout can actually find some form once again towards their t side zello in towards an awp but he hasn't been as impactful as he probably would have hoped with it as of just yet at times t side orping and overpass can be extremely difficult so come out just yet a great flash again. from mhl though nerds a free beat stair to form heavy god might add to it he will siphon drops immediately two youngsters down and out for the count nice frag a nice position for heavy god that's uh one that if i'm a connector player i also tend to play myself because it's a humongous off angle top of the pallet at the back of the the boxes in connector clean round refresh is charging up long and mhl hears it interesting that there was a bit of a variation there for well, this should be round over here Oh, that was unlucky. Should be just about right. There we go. Max finds the kill. So four alive, very handy. But yeah, that's an interesting change up in the variation of what Nurtz has been doing toward mid, right? He's gone up long once, he's got a pick. He's gone up toward fountain, dry, twice, and been successful once. This time, he has flash support from MHL, and it works out as a, with a beautiful opener, which kind of stifles Sprout's idea straight away, right? I think so, yeah. More or less, right? And I think it now means that... Well, actually, I mean, looking forward for Sprout. I mean, what, what is the turning point? I was trying to think off the back of these last few rounds where we haven't that seen that much success. How do they try and change it up? And it looks like holding W towards B. I said Tech Nines might be uh, something <laughs> that could change the tempo a little bit. Anyway, there's the first. Looking for more. It's a messy spray from Surreal, but thankfully be able to capitalize himself and a double comes through from there so see it off in an air flawless fashion only one casualty you know the igl of max but i like the idea there for sprout step of the tempo you're looking for a bomb part you're looking to try and well, i mean as best you can uh have some little bit more of extra cash in towards the neck it does mean though from I, at one point we were looking at sprout dominating t-side overpass and putting our guaranteed a lead so uh, while i don't think yeah. five rounds on the t-side overpass is bad i actually think a 10 5 is actually really not too shabby at all but for sprout you kind of expected a little bit more indeed i mean if you look at the circumstances this is absolutely not bad for endpoint at all that's a good yeah. recovery but there's a long long way to go and sprout on their ct side is often very reliable indeed it's real bit of a pick here i think he just brought the gun barrel of xiphon our next has got himself up toward the boost railing. But no one there to boost off of just yet. Siphon needs some utility. Surely he'll get shown two to in a second. There it is, but he can't complete the kill. You see the head of Laranex too? That's a very close pick. Once again, Nurtz in that same position is doing so much damage. Another multi-frag for him. He's up to 16 and 9 in this half. This is exactly what we expect from him. You mentioned him as the best rifler and entry in tier two. And honestly, he shows it very often. MHL will get his one kill and it puts Lauren X and Refresh in a 2v4 with 50 seconds to go. It's the first. Refresh will fall. And only all down to one man. The youngster, Lauren X, unfortunately. Comes up trumps. Very little that he could find there. That's actually a really good resurgence from Endpoint. This CT side is looking much, much better than, than how it initially started off. Losing the pistol in the, kind of the, the first few rounds after that, you're thinking, my God, maybe this is going to be an extremely slippery slope. You know, it was 3-0 at one point for Sprout, and I was thinking this could be made, you know, in a matter of moments, kind of 5, 6, 7, before we really see true, you know, competition from Endpoint. Thankfully, though, They've turned it around, and the fact that they're already building up a wealth of a lead means they're heading in towards this next half and next pistol. Even if they were to lose it, Endpoint still have so much breathing room. But surreal, take a 50 damage through the Molotov. Prioritizing control as NHL will open things up. Yeah, that's uh, bold, but there were no flashes to get Sprout any short control, so it's completely in Endpoint's favor now. He's playing the smoke fade too. He's the timing. Nice one wing spray. He gets his one for one. Of course, it does keep that man's advantage intact. Final round of the half coming in. It'll be broken open. It'll be used to break open the door. Needs to break open when they explode, don't they? 
Sir and Zypher 2v4 and MHL's found him with a quick no scope as he tries to phase the smoke. It's a wonderful recovery from Endpoint that should be very happy with this streak of rounds. We were talking about Sprout just keeping it going from 15-10 behind on Vertigo. You get the first three of overpassing, having 12 rounds in a row over two separate maps, but Endpoint a double digit half on T side, while five is not bad, but any shadow of a doubt on T side, it's still a good recovery, and they're going to go in five rounds up. We'll see you after a very quick break. Thank you. That was... Welcome back, Endpoint, on the road to recovery, it seems. 10-5 half is pretty astounding off the back of, uh, at one point, it was looking very favourable over towards Sprout. They found five, and sadly, it starts to fall quite flat for Sprout. Now we need to research from them on towards their CT side. Look, the first pistol of the entire series in towards the first round of pass. Can they make it two for two on the map? We shall see. Sprout, favoured CT side, however, as you say, as we both say, Endpoint, quite impressed with their recovery in this one. This could still be going on for a little while yet. Don't forget, second semi-final is coming up directly after this. Fours versus Falcons. That's a bit of a banger as well. 
very looking forward to seeing how that one pans out. Is uh, of course the two winners of these two BO3s going through to a grand final tomorrow. That one final spot in the main stage of Pro League. Xyphon's kind of pinched in the attack here, but Max goes back and checks it. That is a beautiful find. It means they can just exit the B play entirely and go back toward the A bomb site up connector. Refresh needs a good defense here, but he's got no Kevlar. In fact, his presence alone has spooked Endpoint into just holding back a little bit. There are only two players there. It's a bit of a split, but they continue to force rotations. Now they're just going straight back into Lauren X. Bomb can go up connector and be planted on A. Absolutely fine. Heavy God can keep Lauren X busy. We'll go into MHL. Won't be able to find him. Endpoint. That is a wonderful T side start. Hello, I'm sniffing a map three. Potentially, Inferno is going to be needed, it seems, Trav. Yeah, you're right on. I mean, this is looking good. Endpoint revitalized. They are looking, well, quite literally, back behind the, the wheel. They're looking in control as we pan our way through a car. So, overall, for Endpoint, this is a really, really good start. I mean, a solid T side pistol round means they've got plenty of cash to work with. They'll know for a fact that for Sprouts, it'll be very limited. Whatever they are managed to bring in towards this one, it's not actually going to be too scary. And the only thing they really need to be concerned about is probably just the, the, the fact that there might be a bit of a, a gamble stack. Zello, look out towards Long. Scarving a peak, might get tested. The boss. Alt attack for the first, no kill though. Surreal, good trade. Seeing him off and taking the numbers in favor of endpoints. Yeah, Surreal with a nice one. Then he got tagged as well. Good. Hold, but of course it's still a very dangerous round. 5-7, Eagles, MP9. Such a terrifying buy to go up against sometimes. Never know when a 5-7 can just pop around the corner and insta-tap you at this level. MHL creeping around. It looks like point. I'm going to take the bomb back toward B. Just to see... I'm continuing to push forward, making the series competitive. This is exactly what I wanted. Of course, everyone. Have a good game. Nerds again makes the MP7 work for an opening kill. Like it does work out. Mitchell, though. That's the thing with the Deagle these days. That might have been two body shots pre-nerf and an easy kill. But it has to be three this time. Mitchell. <laughs> Mitchell and Loud X phasing through the smoke together. He just about gets away with his life, considering he was 16 HP. And Xyphon just wants one kill here. At least one to take into the next round to do some more extra damage. Wow. Oh, okay. Xyphon, what is that? That double is pretty sumptuous. I mean, it's only consolation kills, but it'll take a bit of a confidence booster. Lovely little double. Not going to do anything in terms of the more grandiose scope, but hey. Double Deagle, pretty nice. My Deagle definitely doesn't do that, so I'll give him the credit where the credit's due. Overall, Endpoint still make their way up towards 12 rounds, or two remaining alive, but, you know, I think they would have been hoping for four, but I found other ideas, and he gets an MP7 as a very, very slight upgrade. Of course, it does mean heading in towards under 18, because of that full investment by Sprout, the, the money is pretty abysmal. So not going to be able to bring too much to the table. He's going to drop over the MP7 to refresh, going to wield the... Uh, the Deagle himself, and there's going to be very, very slight buys to kind of work around here for, for Sprout. But it, it's just sticking above that, that 2k mark, making sure you have money to work with. Zello, not going to invest in towards anything. Of course, he wants the big green in towards round number 19. So he'll just keep his uh, money as healthy as he can. When they go, Heavy God wanting to farm away. And, uh, still very happy to stick with that MP7. So... I mean, that's the interesting thing about it, right? I mean, he's bought it again in this round, which is obviously a pretty expensive SMG, one of the most expensive in the game. And he only has $700 to spare, so it's not like he can drop it next round and upgrade. So he obviously wants to keep it heading into the next gun round, and I would say probably the best SMG on the T side against the full bite maybe would be the MP7, especially for the mid-ranges. But... See how it goes. Refresh has got one of his own. Of course, from before. Yeah, so we'll make it work for another kill. Ham's coming through. Some point. Allowed to win this round with five players alive. 
Jumps uh, achieving at the moment. MP7 recovers that as well. He does manage to get that kill jumping, but MP God was always coming in on the flank. No worries at all for endpoint 13-5. The gap now. That is going to be a long streak that they need to recover this. It's pretty brutal, actually, from Sprout. This is a map in which we were saying, you know, historically and especially recently as well, they've looked very good on. Sprout have made this map a, again, one of their own. The fact that we're now seeing quite the considerable struggle come through, it, it does question maybe, you know, well, I mean, even think towards the other side, right? Imagine if, if uh, M point had seen our vertigo, we could have been a very quick series, just, you know, the other way. But uh, at 13 to 5, Sprout have got such a mountain to climb to get back into this. Not a bad start, a refresh the first. Flash will catch Surreal, but he gets the kill nonetheless. Back to 4 versus 4. Surreal will just slink away through the smoke. Timing. Oh, yeah. Talk about timing. Zello is actually a bit fortunate to get away with his life there. He's had a very quiet overpass, but now CT Slow he needs to be stepping up. Especially as the author. Oh, and again, timing. This doesn't go his in his favour. Nertz sees him before really Zello can see Nertz. Even though Laranex got that kill in response, it's Zyphon Stair 2v3. This is a very solid overpass performance on a, against a team in Sprout, which, you know, they're not... It's not like they're unbeaten on overpass, but they have had good records on it recently and do like this map. It's one of the ones they're very happy to pick into. Zyphon now has to tap away from the back of ABC. Make this round a reality once again. 30 seconds to go, and point working in towards short and monster. Bomb is here, it's definitely going to be B. Max only has that Mac 10. But there we go, on an entry. Now, Stair should have been caught jumping into the water. So much damage done. He has to get out of there, but I don't really think there is a way out. Ooh, you luck lucky little rascal. And he saved the M4. That's the only goal now. And Neo, somehow, don't ask me how. Uh, it's mostly due to Endpoint's good play, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, we're two rounds away from that three. Oh, and it shall. Quick as well. I mean, I never honestly thought we'd be having this conversation. I, I think, you know, a lot of credit has to be given towards Endpoint and the way in which they've composed themselves in towards, uh, you know, just generally speaking, Mountain too. both CT and T-Side have really looked very strong. But I think actually it does make you question even on a little bit more of a deeper sense about how bad things were in the latter stages of Vertigo, right? Because, you know, we saw for a, for a, a large part of Vertigo, especially when they got towards 15, those kind of those rounds between 10 and 15 for for, for Endpoint, right? They were playing lights out Counter Strike, some really really solid play. You know, you look towards the likes of MHO who was consistently stepping up, Nerds having his moments too, uh, Heavy God as well being super impactful. And you're thinking, okay, you know, these guys are really running a riot right now. And then you you cast it back to where we stand now with them. Nine on the trot for Sprout, having a really, really bad run of form. Something mentally must have really blocked them off from seeing off Vertigo because that was a you yeah. know a pretty brutal crumble. But thankfully, they've had kind of 10, 15 minutes in between the two maps to take a breather, stand up, walk around, get a coffee, whatever they need to, and uh, be able to revitalize themselves because, you know, that, that latter stages of Vertigo, it's a shadow to what we see now. It's crazy, isn't it? We could have been looking at a 2-0, which is just not something we would have been thinking in any way, shape or form. They just really wanted to finish it off as quickly as possible now. Surreal charging in towards me, does get his entry. And refresh, I've got to say, actually, to be fair to him, does really well to get two with the Thamas in that scenario. And now an X right practice with Bert. Big swing from Stair, but it's a long range spray, hard to deal with, but it doesn't matter. Because now an X is there, and that could be a long road to recovery. However, as I was going to say, I mean, it's crazy that we could have been thinking about a 2 0 in this sense. If they haven't, lo haven't lost from 15 10 up, we've had two insane streaks in this game. We've had the yeah. recovery from Sprout from 15 10 behind, nine rounds in a row, 12 if you want to include the three in the opening of this map as well. And I'm pretty sure Sprout were 5 2 up. And then just then it was 14 5. So that's another streak to talk about. And Sprout have finally stopped it. It's just nuts, isn't it? It really is. That we're at this sort of stage. And uh, I, I guess also really kind of reaffirms the idea that both of these sides are so momentum heavy. Refresh. Does he realize how much danger he's in? He'll just get on a dodge. It doesn't matter either way. He's typing for two. He's dealt one of his own in a matter of seconds. Nerds and MHL feeling pretty lonely on overpass. Man. 
That is a great hold from Sprout. Xyphon with those two kills from the back of the railing on Monster. Valve nerfed that uh, years mm -hmm. and years ago. And then, of course, the professionals found another pixel to sit on. <laughs> That's how it is. But yeah, from 5-2 to 14-5 is just as uh, just as an impressive streak as what Sprout had over two maps. This is one though, so maybe you could even class it as more impressive. Lowenex using the window of the truck to jump spot any advance toward bathrooms. That window is quite literally as hard as rock. You'll have no bullets penetrating that. Yeah. I've uh, lost to that angle a few times. His mouse wheel is is working double right now, working overtime. You're, you're, you're a mouse wheel jumper? Absolutely not. Thank I've God. learned I've learned from a, a, <laughs> a mighty legendary Trav CS thread. Oh not God! To be a mouse, yes, mouse wheel jumper. Yes. I nah, but I, I I have very very default like key binds and all that stuff. I, I've never really played like changed them up too much. And now I've been playing CS for like six seven years. It's too late. I I, I can't exactly. now teach them. Yeah. Funny enough, actually. So, I, I, I mean, if anyone has seen on Twitter, I got, got a new PC and I reinstalled CS on the new PC for the first time yesterday. And uh, I think I, I needed a config. I couldn't remember my old one. I forgot to bring my old config. So I was like, right, you know what? I'll go with like Doc, right? Doc, you know, I've, I've, I've seen his yeah. FBL and it, it's so, somewhat similar to what I use. He uses mouse wheel and we played, I played a wingman with a friend. That felt weird. I was using mouse wheel <laughs> for like a half in wingman and I was, I was really bugging out. Cause I, as well, I mean, maybe this one's a little bit criminal, but I also use mouse wheel to scroll through my weapons. So it is a bit criminal. I do agree. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 the thing is I grew out of it finally. It took, it took me a long time to grow out of it, but I did. And it's because I got a new mouse and the mouse I have is the Logitech G502. Other mice are available. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> But, but that's a classic right but uh yeah like it has loads of buttons on it so like on the side on the left mouse button there are two buttons to the left of it i use the top yeah. one for flash and the second one for smoke and then the, okay. one, the button right. directly beneath that i use for molly and the one above the molly one which is slightly further back i use for uh, speaking in game and switching to my pistol as well because there are two there now that switching to the oh, pistol okay. is a weird one but i'm so used to it that it's completely natural now and it avoids me using scroll wheel. and i also agree with you using scroll wheel to jump is not the way i think i'll ever go so we shall see for the future but i doubt i'm going to be changing much for now every god that's uh he might, might want to change the beginning of that round though because he's been spammed down to three hp that's gonna hurt yeah not exactly the dream start for him by any means he's gonna get boosted up you even maybe think of a oh they've made noise as well they've made noise yep. and now you might get even more spam coming through. Surreal's not exactly sitting too pretty. He's on 61, but he could fall flat in a matter of seconds. I certainly. Sprout edging closer to a comeback. An endpoint might have some PTSD from the previous map. So this time it's a lot bigger lead than they had back then. It was just five or six back on Vertigo. Now it's uh, it was nine, so... They somehow found a way to lose this one. I would be pretty shocked. But it is the endpoint way, unfortunately, on occasion. But anyway, I still have a chance in this round because it's still a 5v5 despite the damage done from Sprout. Zello 7 and 16, Stair 7 and 18. They really need to step up to give Sprout a chance to recover. It will be endpoint working their way up short into what be here. On top is kind of well timed, you've got to be said. All the kills coming through for Sprout. He does get one back, but the flash toward monster is spot on. And the lurk from Nertz is removed by Lauren X. One kill each for Lauren X there and refresh. Two for Xyphon. And the money for an endpoint is once again not in a good spot. So Sprout continuing to close. Uh, it, it does actually open the door a little bit here now for Sprout. They, they really could get themselves, well, they should get themselves to the nine, but you think on, on a little bit more of a longer scope, right? If they take that round, which kind of uh, confirms them on towards 10, Endpoint is then stuck in a really brutal cycle where the possibility once again of tying the game up or at least getting within kind of reaching distance, it becomes super viable. And in, in a similar way we had it in the latter stages of, of Vertigo, we can start having that conversation again of... You know, oh my god, please, not again. Endpoint. See it off this time. As you mentioned, a much bigger lead here. 
But the choke out this would be brutal. Nurse has been spotted out. Refresh, thankfully, she's going to get out of dodge. Doesn't want to stick around too long. It is just pistols, but we know those deagles can rattle off pretty mightily. Well, our next, be careful. We can get faked out here, and there we go. That's what Heavy God's superb at. Just these deagle picks, which are unexpected, even though the CT has the advantageous angle. Another sick one from him. MHL with that recovered AK now, and Zello's position has been spotted as well. Is he feeling a bit cold after not doing much at all on this map? Five v four. I mean, forty-five seconds. If they group up together with this AK and play, then there's a chance. Heavy God's going to stick around and try to be a nuisance from long. At least show some more presence while they go back toward B. But look, there's a double setup for Sprout. They look for information here. They need it as well. Zello has found that lurk, and that's a good recovery from Stair. Even though he's dinked, he now has rifle support from Cyclone. But he gets removed beautifully by Nurse. What a shot that is! And he's no. found Stair as well! Oh my good god. Nurse is back in the server with a vengeance. Refresh and Zello trying to recover the situation. But an AWP on the retake and only two flashes. This is not easy at all. Oh, oh no, oh no, what a round. Nerds take a bow. I'll continue to always sing his praises. <laughs> and thankfully, he always proves me right. It, it, it's like the best Crazy. person I can kind of, you know, hedge my bets on in a way, just because he's just so consistently steps up to the plate. I mean, he is a serious magic man. 25 and 14. That double D entry on towards B is just sumptuous from Nerds. Love to see it. Really do. M point out 15. It's their cursed number, though. Not exactly their best friend. Somebody would say their worst enemy off the back of Vertigo. So, <laughs> while uh, I want to be a believer, maybe even slightly in favor of bias, I'm feeling a little bit nervy. And that's not a great start. No, it's the four. There's the impact man gone. He's done his job, though, in that previous round. Gets him over the line to that at least that map point. Nerds. Middle name. Heimlich, perhaps. Two legal shots were disgusting. 25 to 15 for him. 114 ADR. Super solid. But Sprouts, they're going to still be alive in this one. As you say, Refresh removes them early on in this one. And it's a great chance for recovery. Now, next, keeping around long bathrooms at the moment. Mitchell will be. I mean, his way in a split second or two, but he would be walking directly into Zello. Oh, no. Again, Zello's timings have been so unfortunate in this game so far, I've got to say. He double scopes yeah. in as MHL peeks it, and Launex gets removed, and he'll be questioning, why hasn't Zello pulled the trigger? I thought you were there to help me, my friend. And now Heavy God working his way up toward the site. Removes Stair so quickly. Zello's now under a lot of pressure. They know he's here. And while he's so blind and still hits one, Surreal trades it. A charge through the smoke from Refresh gets removed. It's all down to Zyphon. MHL catches the retake. And there we go for Endpoint. What a recovery again. Unexpected, but we do get to a third map in kind of crazy circumstances. Yeah, honestly, I, I gotta say, in between maps one and two, I didn't think this was a possibility. I just sort of had this internal kind of solution in my head that we're going to go 2-0 and Sprout shouldn't see this off. But just because of their recent form on overpass, it's been pretty stellar, right? So I was thinking in my head, hey, we're done. But now we go...